Thank you for signing on to CCRI's activity, Community Preceptorship. This activity is supported by funding from the Rhode Island Executive Office of Health and Human Services Healthcare Workforce Transformation Program. CCRI would like to thank Rhode Island College and the Interprofessional Community Preceptor Institute for their support and participation in this continuing education activity. Accreditations. This nursing continuing professional development activity was approved by the Northeast Multi-State Division, an accredited approver by the American Nurses Credentialing Center's Commission on Accreditation for one contact hour. This program was approved by Rhode Island College School of Social Work Continuing Education in Social Work for one non-contact continuing education contact hour. In accordance with the standards set forth by the American Nurses Credentialing Center, Planners and presenters have been asked to disclose any relevant financial relationships discussed in any educational presentation. Any potential conflicts of interest have been resolved prior to this presentation. The following speakers and or planning committee members have indicated that they have no relevant financial relationships to disclose. Upon completion of this activity, participants will demonstrate recognition of the value of community-based interprofessional placement for students across multiple healthcare disciplines, including nursing and social work. Upon completion of the enduring educational activity, participants will complete an evaluation stating whether the learning outcome was met and self-report whether they intend to change their practice. Participants will also complete a post-test and must score 75% or higher. This continuing education activity has been developed to educate health professionals on what community preceptorship is and why community placement is important in the education of healthcare students. Activity participants will learn about the basic concepts of assessing an organization's culture and how to promote and provide nurturing interprofessional education and practice in one's agency settings. Hello and welcome to this portion of our training. My name is Jim Reisick. I'm a social worker by training, and I've also led many organizations through an analysis of their organizational culture as a CEO, executive director, and consultant. First, to understand how organizational culture has bearing on interprofessional practice and education, we need to define it. Needle defines culture as the organization's vision, values, norms, systems, symbols, language, assumptions, beliefs, and habits. A very long list. But more simply stated by Deal and Kennedy, it's the way things are done around here. This is important because organizational culture affects the way people and groups interact with each other, and especially with clients and stakeholders in our organizations. I should also note that organizational cultural analysis and organizational development are fields of study with a robust set of philosophical theories and numerous publications focused on leadership and organizational functioning. We're happy to provide references and lists to folks who are interested if they would like to contact us. So why is this important to understand? Well, it's important to figure out how we live and work day by day as we go to work. We need to understand how we interact and the qualities with which we interact with each other on a daily basis. We need to understand how organizational values have an impact on our work and interactions. We need to understand how decisions are made and by whom. We need to understand how we communicate about everything. We need to understand how we deal with conflict and all, how all this affects the effectiveness of our work with clients and patients. Every organization has a culture, but in many organizations, perhaps in most, that organization's culture is not articulated or it's under articulated, and that leaves employees to figure it out on their own. The implication of this is most often a disempowered staff. Healthy organizations strive to make their culture transparent and visible, and the implication of this is that it mostly leads to an empowered staff. I ran the Rhode Island Coalition for the Homeless for over 10 years, where we actually implemented organizational culture into every other staff meeting as the focus of our staff meeting. These are things that you need to nurture and work on in order to make them happen. So why is it important to interprofessional education and practice? 
Well, if you're working with students and teaching them, you need to have an organization that has a more communicative, more transparent and accountable culture and where conflicts get resolved rather than buried and festered. That's just good modeling. It also creates a positive work environment that makes for happier, empowered employees where everyone is a leader in their jobs and takes that responsibility seriously. This has positive implications for student and students learning. It also creates a healthy workplace with a better climate for meeting the organization's goals and mission to serve their patients and clients. So in order to figure out and do a quick analysis of your own organization's culture, you can ask the following questions. How do we interact with each other? And what are the qualities with which we interact with each other on a daily basis? How do the organization's values have an impact on our work and interactions, both positive and negative? How are decisions made and by whom? Do I personally feel empowered or disempowered as an employee in my decision making? How do we communicate about everything? And is communication clear, rational, and transparent? Or is it disorganized, confusing, or often hidden? How do we deal with conflict? In a healthy way or an unhealthy way? In a direct manner or in a sideways manner? And also, is conflict dealt with internally and externally? And finally, how does this affect the effectiveness of our work with clients and patients? That final question is actually at the center of why we do what we do and why we need to think about organizational culture and if it is promoting our effectiveness to help patients and clients with better outcomes. Hello, my name is Sheila Capice. I am the project specialist for the Interprofessional Community Preceptor Institute. Today's goal, you will learn how and why Rhode Island's three state institutions of higher education together with the Warren Alpert Medical School at Brown University, collaborated to establish the Interprofessional Community Preceptor Institute, which will be referred to as ICPI for the rest of this presentation. You will gain knowledge about SIM, the State Innovation Model, a healthcare systems transformation initiative. You will understand the need for community placements that are knowledgeable and exercise into professional practices. I will review with you some agency projects created by ICPA graduates and share with you the 2018-2019 IPCI project, pilot project results. Here's some background. In 2006, the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, Improving Health and Healthcare Worldwide came up with the idea of the triple aim. The triple aim is a framework that describes an approach to optimize healthcare systems performance. The belief is that the new design must be developed simultaneously to pursue three dimensions. So let's take a look at those three dimensions on the triple aim diagram. I'll start at the bottom left, experience of care, improving the patient experience the individual patient, including quality and satisfaction. Up at the top, population health, improving the health of populations, not an individual, but groups, groups like people with diabetes or obesity or the specific health care issue of a minority group. And down at the bottom, per capita cost, reducing the per capita cost of health care. By implementing these three dimensions, the initiative will increase knowledge and abilities needed to support interdisciplinary team-based care and increase cultural competency and diversity within the healthcare workforce. The Rhode Island State Innovation Model, SIM, began in 2015 
when the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services awarded Rhode Island a $20 million grant to promote positive changes to our health care system and to improve Rhode Island's population health. The ICPI talks a lot about population health. And like I talked about on the previous slide, population health is the health outcomes of groups of individuals, including the distribution of such outcomes within the group. These groups can be geographic populations, such as nations or communities, but can also be other groups of people, such as ethnic groups, first responders, prisoners, populations divided into age groups like preschoolers or high school students. The Interprofessional Community Preceptor Institute was one of the healthcare system transformation initiatives that was funded by SIM. Why do we need ICPI? Take a look at this slide and look at these two funnels. At the top, you have two major forces the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, pushing to optimize healthcare through its triple aim framework, and the government centers of Medicare and Medicaid, pushing medical facilities to improve population health, and actually paying medical facilities financial incentives for improving outcomes of population health. Now let's go to the bottom. At the bottom are the institutions of higher education where students are learning interprofessional education and practice in the triple aim framework. Students from di different disciplines such as medical, pharmacy, nursing, social work, and physical therapy are practicing their skills with patient actors in simulation labs getting ready to enter the workforce. Part of the educational requirements for students is to do internships at community agencies and medical facilities. In the middle of these two funnels are the community agencies that take student interns and hire our graduating students. We have found that in most cases, the organizational culture of the community agencies and medical facilities do not support an interprofessional learning environment. The people doing the work in the facilities are resisting the changes being pushed from the top. Of course, these changes come with increased paperwork and tracking systems. It's a lot of work. On the other hand, the agencies are not aware that the interprofessional education that the students, uh, the student interns and graduates have acquired, students can help these facilities with these new changes. The ICPI was funded to bridge the, bridge the gap by providing interprofessional education to staff members working in community agencies and healthcare facilities. The following video is of Marty Rosenberg talking about the ICPI project. At the time, Marty was the director of SIM, the Rhode Island State Model Test Grant that funded the ICPI project. I believe one of the most important things that Mahdi says in this video is that 80% of healthcare takes place outside of the medical provider's office. What Mahdi is referring to are the things that we do at home and in our communities, our ability to exercise and monitor our blood pressure and sugar levels, the health-related information we learn from our friends, like a new diet program or health-related books to read, and how we de-stress, like going to the theater, concerts, nature walks, meditation, or participating in religious practices. <clears throat> the 80% that she talks about is also where we find the social determinants of health, the barriers that prevent good health care the things that people don't have access to, like safe place to walk, exercise, financial problems that prevent them from taking their medication properly, people with language barriers or folks with mental health issues such as social phobias that prevent them from forming trusting relationships with their healthcare professionals. Some people don't have access to fresh air, transportation, or a house without mold or lead paint issues. 
These social determinants of health are the things your medical provider don't know about. That is why the movement towards interprofessional health care is so important. When we work as a team, patients are served better. The state of Rhode Island is dedicated to working with our institutes of higher education to improve our healthcare system by investing in our workforce. And so today is an event put on by a student at Rhode Island College as part of a program that we've been funding to train our workforce in how to work together with other healthcare professionals. And we know that 80% of our healthcare happens in the community, not in the doctor's office. So if we take the training out of big institutions or out of doctor's offices and have it happen right in the community at a place like Genesis Center, we know we are helping kids, working with families, and making our healthcare workforce stronger. Here's some background on our ICPI pilot project. It was illustrated on the last slide that the unmet need for this project is the lack of interprofessional education in community-based placement sites and community learning opportunities for health and allied health students. Here's how it works. How did we attempt to bridge the gap? The ICPI funds provided training opportunities for preceptors in community-based health and social service agencies, and we paid agencies $2,000 for each preceptor that successfully completed the training. This is a list of the goals and objectives of the ICPI pilot project. Create an interprofessional education and practice curriculum foster mentor-mentee relationships between ICPI faculty and community preceptors, develop meaningful interprofessional student experiences in participating agencies, collect and utilize evaluation data to guide program improvements, collaborate to resolve agency challenges and barriers that prevent community-based educational experiences. Our target audience, preceptors working in local community health care and social service agencies. A comprehensive ICPI training curricula and criteria was developed by faculty from Rhode Island College, the University of Rhode Island, the Community College of Rhode Island, and the Warren Alpert Medical School at Brown University. They represented the fields of social work, medicine, nursing, pharmacy, and physical therapy. The 27-hour training included online modules and webinars, face-to-face -face meetings and workshops, self-guided assignments, agency-specific projects, and ongoing support and mentoring. Community agencies that committed to enrolling one to three staff members from two different disciplines to participate in the ICPI training would be eligible to receive a stipend of $2,000 per participant to be used at the discretion of the agency that's sending the preceptors. Our goal was to have two training cohorts. We recruited agencies and individuals by email and phone calls. The, cohort, the first cohort had 11 preceptors representing six agencies. The second was made up of eight agencies and 16 preceptors. The training participants were involved with six face-to-face -face trainings, two full day and four half day. They also received online access to training modules and webinars. Participants completed an interprofessional education practice readiness survey and were responsible for developing agency projects. Our faculty were available to help with the designing and implementing of projects. In total, 111 students were involved in their agency projects. The training evaluations were combined from cohort one and cohort two. They indicated the following gains in knowledge. Knowledge of the benefits of interprofessional learning, preceptors understanding of IPE concepts and competencies, 
preceptor's capability to develop an IPE learning experience for students, and preceptor's capability to lead IPI learning for students. So the next two slides are a list of agencies that were involved with the ICPI training and the kinds of projects they developed. Rather than talk to you about each one of them individually, I'll read off the list of names of each agency and then show a short video that describes in detail the experience of two preceptors from two different agencies. In cohort one, we had PACE, Primary Care at Fatima Hospital, East Bay Community Health Center, House of Hope, the Family Care Clinic, and the Rhode Island Free Clinic. In our second cohort, we had Blackstone Valley Community Health Center, Genesis Center, the Community Care Alliance, Housing Works, the Rhode Island Parent Information Network, the Rhode Island Primary Care Physicians Corporation, Progresso Latino, and the VA Medical Center. This grant has been very helpful to the Genesis Center in increasing our family engagement effectiveness and really combining the ELC community and the adult services community because that's been one of our barriers for years and because we have been afforded these resources through the ICPI grant, we're able to do some of the things that we need to do and are good for our community and will make Genesis stronger and make our community relationships stronger and make the relationship between our early learning center and our adult services um, stronger that we wouldn't have been able to do without the ICPI grant and being part of this project. So this grant initially came about through the State Innovation Model Test Grant, uh, which is a federally funded initiative in Rhode Island that allowed the state to test various uh, new approaches to healthcare delivery. What we set out to do was to develop what is now known as the Interprofessional Community Preceptor Institute, in which we reached out to community-based agencies, both healthcare providers and social service providers, to enlist them as partners in providing experiential learning opportunities for students, but also to support them in their efforts to increase their capacity uh, as preceptors and also as providers of services. I can really congratulate Rhode Island College in their workforce development uh, enterprises to be able to say that to move forward in the 21st century, students in behavioral health really do have to understand the interdependence and the interparticipation of clients coming into, in, into the healthcare world. So this is very exciting because we are now training students not through simulations, which is this pretend medical actor and a pretend clinic, now this is real and they have real clients and it's in a real practice setting and um, so that's taking me to the next level. So one of the uh, longer term goals of this grant and this project is to develop more capacity um, within the schools for, to support interprofessional education, more capacity in the community based organizations to support students learning and also, uh, ultimately, to support an increased capacity to provide interprofessional care or team-based care that is truly integrated and, and makes the most of the um, knowledge and skills of a range of health uh, care professionals for the benefit of, of consumers and communities. The most important thing from my perspective is that 85% of the students who graduate from our program stay in Rhode Island and work in Rhode Island. So we are actually training our own future clinicians. And that is very important. That's the lasting effect, is that you're training people who are going to be working in this healthcare system. And that's how you transform the system, in the ground up.
If I could apply for this grant again, I would without hesitation. I think it was very helpful for our project. Our outcomes and our goals for this were increased parent engagement, uh, more community reached with health education topics. I think we did achieve that goal. This is something I'd like to see more of, and I have plans to systematize this and make it part of what Genesis Center is moving forward. We were able to, first of all, interview the students and get their commitment to the interprofessional collaborative mindset and to understand that we were going to work on the competency of roles and responsibilities. We're going to continue this program because it serves the organization and I, I'm not only for myself but on behalf of the agency. The agency is very pleased with what we were able to do. It was terrific. One of the unexpected outcomes of the ICPI was that it fostered partnerships. It provided an opportunity for Rhode Island Institutions of Higher Education, the Rhode Island Collaborative of Interprofessional Education and Practice, and Rhode Island's Executive Office of Health and Human Services to collaborate on a five-year strategic plan, which identified a broader vision of interprofessional education and practice research, and sustainability. The results of the five-year strategic plan guided our grant writing efforts, which afforded the ICPI to merge and become, part, become a project of the Rhode Island Collaborative for Interprofessional Education and Practice. Lessons learned. The development of agency projects allowed preceptors to take a deeper look at population health and the social determinants of health affecting the population served by their agencies. The projects challenged the preceptors to think creatively about a comprehensive service approach that looked beyond their own discipline and expanded their vision by working with people from other disciplines. This was achieved by creating interprofessional teams made up of agency staff and utilizing student interns. The project also helped to identify organizational culture barriers that have an impact on promoting interprofessional education and practice within their agencies. Other lessons learned. This slide has three columns, new challenges, things to do differently, and post-ICPI pilot. The new challenges are the things we identify during the training. The things to do differently are the things that we talked about afterwards and how we can improve the program. And the post-ICPI pilot is the column in which these are the things that we're working on right now. So I'll start by looking at the first new challenge. We learned that agencies are reluctant to send higher paid staff to trainings because of lost revenue. People like doctors, nurses, uh, uh, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, psychiatrists, these people just cost the agencies too much money uh, by going to a training, an all day training or even a half day training. So what could we do differently? So we thought about looking at alternative ways to deliver training that would not require face-to-face -face meetings. What are we working on right now? We're working on a toolkit that offers preceptor training on demand through webinars. The second challenge was that we found that the institutions of higher education and their faculty involved had different levels of experience of interprofessional education and practice. What to do differently? improve ICP, ICPI faculty development for all institutions of higher education. And what are we currently working on? We're working on faculty development. The third challenge is that agencies requested students from multiple disciplines and for a variety of reasons, the ICPI could not make that happen for everyone. What to do differently? We'd like to identify a point person at each department of each agent of each university or college involved with the ICPI. Uh, what are we working on right now? We thought that we would start by developing an agency user guide to recruit students. 
sustainability approaches. In our sustainability approach, we looked at four categories, funding, learning, partnerships, and evaluation. This slide describes where we're at right now. Under funding, partners have successfully collaborated on a proposal to support another two years of the ICPI. Under learning, the ICPI faculty members are moving the ICPI training to an online platform, working on acquiring CEUs and various toolkits. Under partnerships, the Rhode Island Collaborative of Interprofessional Education and Practice became the umbrella program for the ICPI and is committed to increasing community partners. Under evaluation, results from the pilot and the strategic plan informed grant writing and a research model has already been approved by the Institutional Review Board at Rhode Island College for the next funding period of the ICPI. This concludes the slides about the ICPI pilot project. My name is Sheila Cardenti Capice, and I am the project specialist for the Interprofessional Community Preceptor Project. If you would like more information or you'd like to be involved with this project, my contact information is below. Hi everyone, I'm Lynn Blanchett. I am a nursing faculty at Rhode Island College. I teach community and public health to nursing students at the undergraduate and the graduate um, level in our programs. Um, I am also the current program director of the Interprofessional Community Preceptor Institute. And as you have heard um, before from Sheila was involved uh, when we had a SIM grant to do the Interprofessional Community Preceptor work as well. Our goal for this presentation is to discuss the importance of healthcare students learning in the community with a focus on population health and on having interprofessional education and seeing interprofessional practice in the clinical setting. Our objectives include uh, gaining knowledge about the use of community sites to meet court course outcomes. I suspect that many of you as faculty uh, don't have a lot of experience um, identifying or using community sites where students might have learning experiences that match up with your course outcomes. So our intention is to help broaden the understanding of where students could have a, a good clinical experience. We'd also like to help you recognize the importance of trained preceptors. Well, in my experience, many of us have used um, experienced clinical providers um, to uh, match them up with our students. And that's really important that students gain critical clinical skills. But in addition to that, what we're hoping to find is uh, preceptors who are also experienced at doing interprofessional practice and providing educational opportunities for students in that way. We also want to evaluate our faculty roles in the supervision of students in community placement. It has historically been that we've uh, signed our students up for a clinical placement. We've uh, sent them off there after signing contracts with the clinical um, placement, but uh, the clinical preceptors often don't have a clear understanding of what it is that the student is wanting to specifically achieve in that clinical setting. So you really want to explore a little bit more how we can support that for faculty. And we're also going to demonstrate a commitment to best practice for educa educational pedagogy in healthcare education, because really the practice settings in the community are very much moving in the way of IPP. Okay, so a little bit of background about the um, healthcare workforce transformation um, through the Executive Office of Health and Human Services. So uh, um, the state and nationally uh, through the Center for Medicare and Medicaid um, set a goal to um, uh, increase the amount of community-based professional health education. So um, not, far beyond students learning about interprofessional education in hospital settings or in primary care, but actually really focus on um, helping students understand where the people they are taking care of live, 
that the care they provide is culturally competent, that um, even if you see someone in an acute care setting, that person goes and lives somewhere in the community, works somewhere in the community, you know, goes to school, goes to church, raises their family, and all of those things are happening in the context of a home and community, and so need to be taken into account as part of the health planning um, that we do whatever setting we see uh, patients in. So we were really also hoping to expand these partnerships across our health educational programs um, and across healthcare service providers. So um, the way that we had traditionally done clinical experience was, I'm a nurse, I know a nurse, I asked that nurse or the agency that that nurse works within to take a nursing student and to show them really what the role is of a nurse in that organization. And this project has really helped us to expand that view of how education should happen. So the next goal is that um, we also provide uh, more uh, classroom instruction that to help understand, help students understand um, how home and community-based approaches will really help us achieve our population health goals. And then we really want to, as part of this project, help expand home and community-based residency programs so that our newly licensed, our new graduates um, can continue to get uh, specialized training. We also want to sort of talk about why it's important to do. So as more of healthcare delivery is shifting to the community, we recognize that the clients that our students uh, meet are really living in communities and the community that they live in has an impact on their healthcare outcomes. So we want to really be focused on the social determinants of health and how the high costs of healthcare are driving new models of care delivery. Things like accountable entities for example. And also many um, disciplines are now having accreditation standards that are requiring students to have access to high quality community-based and IPE, IPP source of experiences. I've shared with you an example here about interprofessional team practice for, from pharmacy, which states that all students competently participate as a healthcare team member in providing direct patient care and engaging in the shared therapeutic decision-making. They, they participate in experiential educational activities with prescribers, student prescribers, and other student and professional healthcare team members, including face-to-face -face interactions that are designed to advance the interprofessional team effectiveness. So this project really helps to support the students, the preceptors, and the faculty who are involved with these learning experiences to take a, uh, full advantage of these opportunities. Uh, deliver that care. So in the School of Nursing, we have several program outcomes that incorporate this um, to promote professional nursing practice that addresses policy development, the legislative process, healthcare financing, reimbursement, and political activism within a, an ethical framework. And we really know that community organizations are acutely aware of how um, budgets are made, how spending happens, where funding comes from, and are very active in advocacy and policy development work. Um, in addition, our master's program outcome says that um, the, a graduate will be able to analyze population health needs of a diverse society to do preventive health strategies. And so we wanna make sure that our students are learning about health promotion and prevention, as well as uh, treatment and management of acute disease. So how, will we, how do we see faculty involvement happening? An overarching goal of this program is to expand that. And as part of this uh, project, we have an advisory board across multiple academic institutions, across multiple disciplines. Um, and so our conversations are very much modeled on how we would like to see our students work in their precepted um, organizations with their preceptors. So we really want among faculty to have them understand, support, and engage age in IP and IPP um, among your faculty, community-based practitioners and students so that you are talking the language of IPE and IPP. We want to support faculty by creating community-based precepted experiences, which are prepared to support student learning needs. And we have developed those goals based on our accreditation standards, industry standards, and solid pedagogy that really contributes to the community organization with scholarship. So many of the faculty who do community um, 
uh, education who work with students who are in the community serve as members of boards on the community agencies because they tend to be small nonprofit um, community organizations. We're board members, we help with grant writing, um, we may work with um, employees to develop new programs. Along with our students, we might be supporting them to write policy, um, to advance evidence-based or best practice um, sort of new policies within their organization. So it really is incumbent on us as faculty to support these organizations that are agreeing to take our students. And so we really want to focus on developing that opportunity as well. And scholarship is good for faculty, right? We, we can um, use the scholarship that we conduct within these organizations to advance our own careers. As faculty, our practice partners are essential for student learning. The opportunity for our learners to participate in delivery of real care is essential. And at the same time, many of us as faculty learned our own discipline in a model that puts, for example, nursing students with nurses, social workers with social workers. And that's great because we do need to become clinical experts in our own disciplines. But what the workplace needs from us and what our preceptors in community can help us to do is to support um, students to learn about being members of teams. This project is all about supporting those practice partners to be prepared to provide those learning opportunities within their organization. We are going to um, hear from a preceptor who ex uh, participated in a previous um, training session all about how this opportunity has impacted the way that they provide student learning opportunities. And those are going to cover the four IPEC competencies. So the um, competency domains include values and ethics for interprofessional practice, roles and responsibilities, interprofessional communication and teams and teamwork. The Rhode Island Free Clinic had the opportunity to participate in an IPE preceptor training project. We were very excited to do this and we had a few goals um, that we wanted to achieve in doing it. We wanted to have a range of students from different disciplines. We wanted to have their experience directly impact real patient care at the clinic. And we wanted to understand the process that we went through so we learned from it ourselves for future student training opportunities. So we engaged 15 students from four different academic institutions and four different disciplines. Um, we thought long and hard about how we were going to have the students participate in a meaningful way that was meaningful to them, meaningful to our patients, and meaningful to the clinic uh, long term. So what we came up with was each student group presented a case study of a real person, a real patient that they were challenged by. And in presenting that case, they had the opportunity to ask their peers from different disciplines what their perspectives and interventions would be. Prior to that, we had each of the student groups think about what their assessment tools and what their interventions would be and they shared those with the group prior to actually doing the case study. This was really important for us and for the students because the students learned more about how the other disciplines look at a patient, assess a patient, and affect a patient through different interventions. Each of the student groups present a real case that they were interacting with a particular uh, patient. So, and a patient that they had a challenge with. So, really simple question. I'm working with this patient. Here are some things that I'm stuck with. What do you, from other disciplines, have uh, in your arsenal of uh, interventions to help with this patient? So, we found that it was particularly helpful because it was real to the students. It wasn't an academic exercise. It wasn't um, a conceptual project. It was an actual patient that they needed help with. So each of the students in preparation, each of the groups of students, prepared um, their assessment and the types of questions that they would ask and the interventions that they would be using to 
look at a, an individual patient. So what we found was that the students were unfamiliar with the other roles and disciplines and the tools and interventions that other types of students would be using. So part of what we did in the project was have the students be very articulate about the assessments that they were using and why they were using it. We found that that was particularly helpful because it helped broaden students' understanding of the diverse roles and perspectives that an IPE team can bring to a patient challenge. One of the things that was very powerful about this experience um, was that we understood in going through this process the difference between a student's clinical skills and a student's IPE skills. So each of the students were, each of the student groups were in varying degrees of clinical expertise, but they were almost universally not familiar with IPE interactions or skills. So this opportunity allowed us to kind of stop and start with the case study and then reflect not only on the information gleaned from the, the IPE experience among the students, but also to have students reflect on what they felt good about, what they didn't realize, what they learned from uh, in terms of their own skills and interacting with their team members. That was, that was perhaps the most important thing that we learned. The second most important thing we learned was scheduling is very hard. 15 different students from four different academic institutions who were all at the clinic at different times. It was a challenge for us to coordinate the schedules. We we're able to do that, and um, it can be done. It's a challenge, but it works and it's worth it to have all of the students together. Now in a COVID reality, that might be done on Zoom even more effectively, but it was really important to have everybody at the same time, in the same place, regardless of when they were actually working with patients. What we learned as an organization is that IPE is extraordinarily important and powerful for students, particularly when it's a real person and their intervention can be made more powerful by the group intervention that they can come up with. We worked with PA students, nursing students, social work students, and physical therapy students. And some of the results of the students working together were amazing, not only for patients, but for students. And we really appreciated the opportunity to do this and look forward to doing similar projects because of the impact both for students and patients and the clinic. We, we felt that the IPE experience had to be driven by actual patient care, but we found that using the patient case studies uh, with um, a real need that the students had was very powerful. Um, so much so that the sessions lasted longer than we, we anticipated. The first session uh, at the conclusion, another group of students said, can we do the next case study? We have this patient that we would love to talk to you about. And they really immediately went from kind of a conceptual project to real world help um, from their other students and from other disciplines. And it was really powerful. And it was a, it was a, it was a great takeaway for us. It helped us focus on the reality that students learn best with direct experience with something that they're challenged by and a real patient that they can help is a more potent experience for them. And they're able to work through some of the different challenges that they have as an IPE team. We were very happy to participate and encourage others to do some interesting innovative project as well. Hello, I'm Laurie Martone Roberts, and I'm going to describe one student's experience with community precepting and how that experience impacted patient care.
The students' community precepting experience included a meeting with the interprofessional team at the agency and a home visit. The interprofessional team included the community health worker, social worker, and registered nurse. The student was also included in the weekly rounds where the entire interprofessional team from the agency met to discuss patients' needs and how those needs could be met. Here we have the students' feelings and reactions on this experience in their own words. As you can see from the comments here that the student has made, they had a very positive experience during their community preceptorship. One of the things that the student commented on was that they were grateful that they had this experience. They also commented that they believe that this is an amazing asset to their studies. And this was a nursing student and they truly believe that this is something that nursing students would benefit from. A week and a half after my home visit with Ripon, I was given a client with terminal cancer. She was a lovely elderly woman and I actually took the time to listen to her. Her primary concern was her hospital gown that was extremely indecent, as they are a one-size-fits-all and she was under 100 pounds. I approached the secretary about addressing this primary concern of my patient, which was met with a roll of the eyes and they all get the same size, we don't have any others. Without my experience at Ripon, I may have stopped there. I knew though that a patient's primary concern can impact so much of their entire experience and what they have the ability to learn while hospitalized. So. I went to my favorite people on the floor, the CNAs, and brought up my concern. Within 30 minutes, we had a gown that was appropriate for my modest client. The expression on my client's face was all I needed to know that I had learned an essential aspect in caring for clients. There has to be a way to prioritize primary concerns even if they are not medical ones. Despite me telling her to stop thanking me, she commented eight times how grateful she was for the gown. After I had addressed her primary concern, Patient education on her illness and medications could begin because I had gained a listener. No matter how small it may seem to me, a gown meant everything to her. The student's experience with the community preceptorship also had an impact on how they delivered patient care in the hospital. So as you can see on this slide, and again, it's in the student's own words, they believed that without the community preceptor experience, this terminally ill patient may not have had her primary concerns addressed. And this meant a lot to the student to be able to address these concerns. And they go on to say that without the experience, they might have stopped at the first attempt to get this patient a gown that actually fit her. But because of this experience, they pushed on and they kept going and did whatever they needed to to make sure that they could get this patient's concerns addressed. The student goes on to say that although a gown may not be a big deal to many, for this patient, a gown meant everything. And the reaction from the patient when she was able to put a gown on that fit properly was all the student needed to see to know that they had learned an essential part of caring for patients. To summarize, this student's firsthand experience through participating in a community preceptor program showed them the importance of all members of the healthcare team working together. They were able to use the knowledge they gained from this experience while they delivered patient care. And in the process, became a change agent and a champion for nursing through these experiences. The student was also able to make an impact on a terminally ill patient. And this meant a lot not only to the patient, but to the student as well. Lastly, this experience was also a big part of why the student received the Senior Student Nurse Award. This concludes CCRI's presentation on community preceptorship. For additional information regarding CCRI's interprofessional education initiatives, please contact the CCRI IPE coordinator, Lori Martone Roberts, at L A M A R T O N E at ccri.edu. Thank you for listening.